Hello Tab Nation, it's your boy Tom, and today we're going to be doing a auto hockey video. Um, this is going to be V1, V2. <clears throat> I'll show you the differences, really, it's pretty simple. But, I'm actually surprised I never did a video like this. I've done tons of videos where I talk about different types of hockey methods and whatnot, but I've never done a video where I just talk about hockeys, which probably should have done years ago as one of my first videos, since that's pretty much where you start when you code, is creating your hockey. <clears throat> so here we go. Um, I'm going to run this script real quick, and we'll see it in action. All right. So a hotkey is basically just when you press a key, perform an action. Uh, Windows automatically, and even Mac and Linux, they, they come with hotkeys built in. Programs come with them built in. You know, in Chrome, you push F11, it takes it full screen. That's a hotkey. You push a button, it performs an action versus just typing. Um, or you can do, you know, Another well-known one that's built in is Control C is copy, Control V is paste. <clears throat> Those are great examples of hotkeys that you've probably used at least once or twice. Um, so here you can make it as simple as replacing uh, a key with just whatever letter. So here, if I press A on the keyboard, it's going to give me. In this example, so we're just going to be using message boxes. Uh, they're easier for the video, but you can make it perform whatever code you want when you press it but pressing a we get a little message box that says you pressed a <clears throat> now you don't have to use a letter or a number you can use like your function keys that's by far my favorite since i don't use them very often so i like using f1 especially if you watch any of my videos you know this uh, so pressing f1 on my keyboard you pressed f1 <clears throat> so those are like single press keys um ignore that so next what we got is uh, we can start to do like combinations. Um, so here, this is uh, the hashtag, the pound sign, depending what generation you're from, what you want to call it, um, stands for the window key. So I'm just putting that in front of the letter N. So if I press the letter N, it's just going to type in like normal. But if I do window N on my keyboard, then we get that message box. You pressed win N. Now, I'll link this in the description below, but in case you uh, want to know, because it's kind of hard sometimes to remember, what does the pound sign mean? You know, what, what key? You can go to their website and uh, scroll down just a little bit, and it has pretty much all the information here that you would need. Um, you know, like, uh, I know there's more than this. Uh, another one I use a lot is the explanation point, which is alt. Control is the up caret, shift is the plus sign, and so on. So definitely check that out so you can get a little bit more specific. Um, yeah, well, that is that one. <clears throat> Next we have, uh, basically we're just going to be using B here as our hotkey. Um, but we're going to make this so it's only going to work in one program. You know, up here, if I press F1, doesn't matter if I'm on my desktop, in Chrome, in Notepad++, it's going to perform that action. But maybe I only want the hotkey to work when a certain window is in focus, a certain program's running. So here we're using the example notepad. So we're going to start it off with if when active, and if when active, just blank, no class or notepad. And class, I've done videos on that, and there's different ways you can do this besides class. Um, but this one just knows that if notepad's there, make this hotkey work, which is going to be message box. So here I'm going to go ahead and push B. And as you see, I'm typing. It's performing its normal action. But I'm going to go ahead and launch Notepad. And instead, here, I'm going to push B. And there is our message box. You pressed B in Notepad. Um, spelled that wrong, but whatever. <laughs> um, so yeah. That's great for uh, doing that. But uh, Notepad is just going to be like the name of the programs. Uh, so as in here, it's just called, as you see right here, Notepad. Um, you can also do it by like the window title, that kind of stuff, but I've done videos on that. So we'll dig a little deeper, check that out. Another way too is if we want to have more than one, uh, we want to have two hotkeys, sorry. Um, we can do an and symbol in there with a space in between. So here we're doing up and B. 
So that'll give me a message box. So I'm going to go ahead, and as you can see, um, up and B is going to give me that message box. Now, another thing too is you can also use your uh, mouse. You don't have to just use your uh, keyboard. Uh, so right here, I have a sign wheel down, which you probably already noticed in this video because I keep accidentally scrolling with this active. Uh, but doing scroll down gives me that message box. You scroll down. So obviously you can change that to wheel down, wheel up, um, stuff like that. Once again, refer back to the link in the description to see kind of what these hotkeys sometimes are called. Um, so for example, like R button obviously is the right. L button would be left and Q. So that's going to be giving me the message box here. Another thing I want to point out is if you have a hotkey performing a single line of code, up here, as you can see, I'm putting the codes, uh, code like this, where it's line by line. But if we're performing a single action, you can actually have it all on one line. Um, so if you're doing something simple like a message box or a send, one line of code is fine. I mean, honestly, I always prefer to do it this way regardless because I just think it's more readable um, versus looking at this long line here. That's technically two things happening. There's the hotkey and there's the message box. But hey, you do it the way you want to each its own. That's it. So right here, it's R button and Q. But you'll notice in the front, there's a little squiggly here, the tilde key. Uh, putting that in the front basically means that the action is still able to perform its normal duty. So for here, I push right click. I'm still getting that menu I normally would get. But if I do right click Q, you can see that I got that message box and the right click still worked. It still did what it normally does. Um, so that's kind of cool. So I can still use my right click as I normally would but then I can also make it, um, you know, get that message box while still also right-clicking. So that's a cool thing to also throw out there. Um, another one is joysticks. Uh, I don't have anything hooked up, but this is not just a joystick. This can be like, you know, uh, any type of controller really for video games. Uh, Joy 2, once again, check out the website to see all what they're called. I can't really show this example because I don't have one with me right now. Um, but you can do Joy 1, Joy 2, that sort of thing, and, you know, get that information. Um, okay, here. I'm doing T. So T is the hotkey, but then it's also saying key weight T. And what that is doing is, as you see from the previous hotkeys, as soon as I press that hotkey, it performs the action. But there can be instances where maybe you don't want that to happen exactly right away. You want to wait till you actually release the key. Video games pretty much are the one I can think of where you would want to do this. So I'm going to press T. I'm currently holding T on my keyboard. Uh, it's doing nothing, but as soon as I let go, boom, message box. I wait it. Um, so key wait's really good sometimes to use with these so that it can um, be a release versus a press. Um, another thing too is you can have multiple hotkeys perform the same action without having to create whole functions for each one. So for here, I'm going to press Y. I got that message box. I'm going to press U. I'm going to get the same message box. So you can have multiple hotkeys perform the exact same action without creating whole, you know, individual sections there. Now, sometimes you might want to block a key. So maybe I don't want the I key to even do anything. I, I don't want it to perform, you know, typing the letter I. I don't want it to perform any type of code. So here I'm hitting I key. It's doing nothing. So all you're doing is just putting a return at the end. Um, that's just going to completely block it from doing anything. Another video game one, obviously, is uh, key remapping. Uh, key remapping also can be good if you're used to using like a Mac computer uh, keyboard. Uh, their layout's a little bit different. They have some keys that you can't really find on the Windows. Um, I think it's called, yeah, the command. So this is a good way to remap. So instead, when I press E, it's actually going to type R. And that's just key remapping. So that's great. You know, there's a lot of video games out there where they might not implement 
Uh, the ability to uh, redo your key bindings, Auto Hockey should solve that problem and give you more freedom than the developers really did, honestly. Uh, F. So here, when I press F, we're using a send, as you see, because it's only performing one action. I have it on one line of code, just to bring that back up. Um, but as you see, it's doing enter. It's not typing out enter, it's actually pressing the enter key. Um, so that's in curly brackets here, but if I were to delete these curly brackets uh, and just get rid of them and push reload the script, obviously, and push F, instead it would actually type out the word return. So just make sure that if you're trying to perform an action that's also a word, just um, make sure you have those curly brackets and it'll perform a return versus typing return. Uh, you're right. So in this one, um, we're going to be doing three uh, button presses to perform an action. So three hotkeys in one. Uh, so here we're going to be doing if get key state control is P, which is pressed. So it's basically looking if I'm pressing and holding the control key on my keyboard down. During that, if this equals true, meaning it is pressed, and I also push shift and B, then perform this action, which is just a message box. So I'm holding control. I'm going to press shift. I'm going to press B. There we go. So that's how you can add um, a way to add more than just two hotkeys in a different variety. Um, so it gives you a lot more options. Now, one thing I want to uh, point out real quick, I'm going to resize my screen. Um, so you can see this a little bit better. So give me one second. All right, there we go. <clears throat> so in the bottom, when you're running your script, uh, it can be any script really, you can go down here and right click on the HK icon, which is just like a little green thing with an H in it. <clears throat> you can um, also push open and you're going to get this nice little dialog box here. And uh, you can go up to view and go to key history and script info. And this is going to show you every button you're pressing on the keyboard. So I can start typing like T-A-B. Uh, well, I have some of them assigned to hotkeys, so it's going to do that. But this will show you your history of everything you've been pushing. So if there's something you're not sure um, that you're pressing. So if I push uh, page down, and I'm going to push, as you see right here, press F5 to refresh. You can see that I pushed page down. So in auto hotkeys, it's just uh, assigned the name PGDN. Uh, and then F5 even got captured to refresh. So that's another way, if you don't know the name of the key, you can find it that way. So hopefully that helps you a little bit. Um, I don't know why I never did this video so long ago. But if you guys have any questions or anything I missed out on in this video, definitely let me know in the comments below. And I hope you guys enjoy this. I release auto hotkey videos all the time. Sometimes I branch out too into other automation stuff just to give you guys variety. So yeah, make sure to subscribe, hit the like button, and I will see you all hopefully on the next one. Bye!